Hello! Today I'm going to have a cheeky snoop through my dad's art supplies to see what exciting things he has. Let's get into it! So of course Gandalf has to be everywhere I want to be and there are walkers everywhere. It's a bit of a mess but I will go around and show you dad's desk. This is where he does his computer stuff and also some of his art. So he's got a few things there and you could see a few art supplies on the left hand side but most of his stuff is on the other side of this very bright door and he has a few shelving units. Some of the things there are CDs but most of it is art supplies in all of those boxes and especially down at the bottom we can see a whole bunch of pencils and brushes there. So many brushes, I can't wait to get into that lot. And going across the other side here there is another little shelving unit and there are more supplies in here along with some books. So I will get to these a bit later in the video. In that big crate is a lot of paper so we'll look at that a little more thoroughly later. But back to this wonderful treasure trove of brushes. Look at them all! There's so many of them. I'm glad I'm not the only one who collects brushes. It's just something that every so often you go into a shop and you pick up a new brush and you never really realize how many you have. He also has quite a few sets of Derwent pencils. There's light fast and pro color pencils in there. I didn't actually pull them all out because I didn't want to mess up the order. Dad did give me permission to do this by the way, I'm not just doing this sneakily. And over here we have his collection of mediums, gessos and fixatives. There's a cute little box of paints here. I actually have the same box and I bought him this one so I'll probably show you what's inside this at a future time. There's a few rogue tubes of different kinds of acrylic paints in there and then we have some more pens in pots and dad has just got these. The white box was something he'd found a while ago and he's using it as a storage. I don't know where it came from. Of course Gandalf had to be in everything and he kept smooching me. It was driving me mad at this point so I had to have a bit of cat patting time before I moved on and now I'm going to open this box so we can see what's in here. I have my camera sitting on a little tripod so I could actually use both hands but he has a whole bunch of these art graph tailor chalk things and he'd seen my video on them and decided he wanted some. They didn't have the set at the time so he's just bought individual ones. Those are brand new because I was with them when he bought them a few weeks ago. He also has an Inktense paint travel set and then this really intriguing looking box. It looks pretty old and I think this actually belonged to my grandfather, my father's father. The art runs strong in our family. I'll open that one in a bit. There's also a little Windsor & Newton Cropsman box so I'll take a peek at those but underneath is a set of acrylic paints. I've never seen that brand before. Some Reeves gouache. I used the white gouache in my nebula paintings which was my previous video and then there's another set of acrylic paints. These are metallic ones by Montmartre. This looks like a brand new box as well. I don't know that he's opened that one and another brand new one is a set of, what are they, PBO or PBO acrylic paints. Back to this little Cotman set. I bought this for dad years ago when it was on sale and he still uses it sometimes I think. I have one of these two somewhere in my set of watercolors. I need to pull it out but this one looks like it's been quite well used. It's a handy little set and now this really intriguing one by May Mary and I would say it's probably vintage from probably around the 80s or 90s. I don't think it's as old as I want to think it is but probably my grandfather had this in his later years and it's got a little swatch card with it. Looks pretty vintage to me and I will open the box just so we can see what's inside. It is such a cute plastic box. I really like it. It has some very well used inserts inside. If I move that one out we could see the very well loved paints. That tube is extra. I think my dad possibly put that in there. I'm really hoping the white paint on that middle brown one is actually white paint and not mold but it's a very well worn set and I suppose one day this set is going to come to me. So back on these shelves there are some little airbrush paint pots in this box here. I didn't actually find the airbrush until after I'd filmed the video but that's somewhere else. And then he also has all of these tubes of Montmartre watercolors. I used to have some of these but I 
think I threw them out because they totally dried up and so I might see if I can shop around for another box of them because they're pretty cheap and they come in seasons they're quite interesting paints so I will have a look for those I'm pretty sure you can still get them and now moving on to this basket which I found under dad's desk and it's full of all sorts of exciting things starting off with this beautiful set of Copic multi liners I think these are new as well dad bought a few things recently and Copic multi liners are always handy do you remember I bought myself some of these brushes well dad saw them and had to get some for himself so he now has a lovely set of these really fine pointed brushes super handy for details and then he has a bunch of these different Derwent boxes that they've released over time there's the ink tense one and then he just recently got this pastel shades box which I am really coveting because the colors in here are so pretty look at them they're gorgeous I really love pastel colors I keep telling myself I don't need more of these boxes but they're so beautifully packaged it's very hard to resist them and then he has a box of tinted charcoal which I'll get open in a moment you could see all of those really neutral charcoal colors. I'd be curious to try this one as well. I've used the charcoal pencils by Derwent and I'm not very good with them, but maybe the little pans would be easier to use. And then this one, Autumn Shades, I did not recognize this, but upon opening it, it's actually the graphy tint set. And for some reason, Dad's just labeled it as Autumn Shades. I guess it does kind of look autumnal, but that was the other one he had there. And then he's got this large green sketchbook. I think that's by Mont mat and it is not yet used so look at all those pristine pages that are just waiting to be filled with something it's much like me at home with a whole bunch of empty sketchbooks I quite like the look of this little Montmartre velcro case which holds pencils it's actually really handy looking and it looks like you can fit about 24 pencils so he's got a set of 12 metallics and then some drawing pencils as well I think both of those are by Derwent as well Derwent's such a popular brand isn't it and then he's got this matching little zippy case with a whole bunch of watercolor brushes that I nearly spilled everywhere because they're not actually sitting in the elastics they're just in there loosely so I think these might be some of his good brushes that's a really nice day brush by the looks of things I left those ones well enough alone before I made a mess I thought there might have been a pen in this case but no it's actually a little set of hobby glasses so we'll move right on to this large box of watercolor paints this is a Mungio set and it's 48 colors if I'm not mistaken and it looks like dad's used this set quite a lot as well which is good to see he also had a couple of tubes in there. There's a Cotman Payne's Grey and also a tube of Titanium White, possibly Winsor & Newton Professional. I think Dad likes to mix his paints with white and make pastel colours. Good idea, actually. And moving on to the next things in this box, because there's more down here. There's a set of Stabilo pens, those fine liner ones. I think I've got a set somewhere, but mine came in a different colored case. So I'm guessing these ones might be a bit newer than my ancient pens. And down the bottom is another little box of watercolor paints. I don't know what these ones are exactly. I hadn't seen them before, but when I open it up, he's made a little swatch card which looks kind of confusing, but hopefully it makes sense to dad. And I think these are actually metallics. I'm not sure if this is Mungyo. I can't quite see from my video footage what exactly it is. It's a Mungyo gallery or something. I don't even know what these paints are. But anyway, moving on from mystery paints, I found a little set of pens here. These are black fine liner ones, and I'm quite sure they are from Derwent. I think I had a set of those somewhere around it as well. They're nice pens, but they're not completely waterproof, which is annoying. And of course, no art studio is complete without at least one cheap plastic palette, which is used for watercolors or acrylic paints. I also found this gigantic brush in there. It looks like a really nice one, actually. And then there's also some watercolor paper by Montmartre. That stuff's relatively cheap, but I think it's okay paper. I'm pretty sure I have a watercolor pad of it at home as well. There's also a electric pencil sharpener. I have exactly the same one. And then some more exciting looking pens. There's another packet lurking as well. Let me just put those up 
more closely to the camera so I left all of those in there. I thought I would not swatch everything out of his but I put everything back as I found it making it look fairly neat and underneath his desk is another exciting looking wooden box here and I found his ink stash. It's pretty hefty and I'm just so jealous of all of those beautiful looking white boxes which hold Windsor and Newton inks. They're not really cheap to buy individually so I think this is something he's collected over time but these are drawing inks if I'm not mistaken and you can use them with dip pens or brushes I don't think you can put them in fountain pens that's probably why I haven't collected them but he also has a few other brands like the Art Spectrum which is an Australian brand and so they're easy to get here I do need to try a few more Art Spectrum inks out and there is another layer underneath there with a whole bunch more inks in the bottom ah uh, I was so tempted just to swatch everything but it was just going to take so much time and very messy so I've left them in there for now it might be something I do further down the track next time I come out to see my dad for today I was just happy browsing through his supplies to see what's in there a motley collection of different ink brands a couple of Dr. PH Martin ink bottles in there and then some Dale Rowney ones so there's a few brands in here which I haven't tried like the one I just picked up so I'd be curious to try out some of these and then the biggest treasure is this huge box of Sennelier watercolors. I also have this. Dad bought this because he'd seen mine and he just thought it was the most beautiful thing. So I have found his collection and I'm afraid that his tubes have kind of gone everywhere. Oh dear. I think because they were on their side at one point and so they've kind of all fallen out but he has been using his tubes I think a lot more than I have. They look very well squeezed and well loved. You can buy this box at Jackson's Art, that's where we ordered ours, but they are of course far more expensive than they used to be a few years ago. I'm talking about a couple of hundred dollars more expensive, so I'm really glad I got them when I did. I actually bought the box for myself for my 40th birthday a few years ago, but these three palettes have all of the Sennelier watercolors squeezed into half pans and dad's organized them by color grouping so he's got reds and yellows in one and then the cooler blues purples and greens in another and some of the blacks and browns possibly ones that don't really sort of fit into other categories and I used these recently for my nebula paintings as well I'm very glad he had them and I only used a tiny bit out of them a little goes a long way there's also this pink zippy case with what looks like gouache brushes or possibly oil painting brushes and now I'm pulling things off the second shelf where the books and papers are this is from the happy dotting company and he's only just received these I was wondering what it is but they're actually little acrylic tools that are used for dotting paint onto things like the pointillism type of painting and I really wish I'd had those when I was doing that chameleon a few weeks ago <laughs> they would have come in really handy and in this other packet are some metal dotting tools because he hadn't opened it properly I left those alone <laughs> and now I'm opening up some watercolor postcards and on the very first one is a little rose artwork that he did I guess at some point but all of the rest are completely empty and waiting to be painted and I'm so tempted to steal a few of these but I didn't I put them all back you should be proud of me <laughs> and you may see me with some other postcards in a future video but I'll come back to that these little pads of paper they are made of recycled elephant dung and old copy paper. Dad's got four pads of them and he actually said I could have a couple of them. It's so interesting I'm going to have to come back to those in a future video I think. I found one of Dad's little art journals and here's some of the things that he's painted in here. I really love this ship and then there's a little bird painting or is it a drawing? I can't quite tell from there. There's a few other illustrations, a blue tongue lizard and a little building sketch so that's one book he's working on and then he also has this one which he actually made at a book binding group and here are some more of his artworks that I found inside because of course I have to snoop inside the books <laughs> The funny thing about this little drawing is that I've done one very similar to it, the shapes of the flowers and everything. I love this sailing ship one. Dad is so good at painting ships. And then I think this one is a local landscape around the area. 
then there's something he's working on there, one of those optical illusions. This looks like the Dalai Lama. That one's really cool too. I like that a lot. And I love this Japanese painting. This one's so pretty. It's such a cool one. And then some more people, Michelle Obama. And I think that's done in colored pencils and maybe a bit of watercolor. Oh my gosh, this one of Pusion is so realistic. And then there's another one of the Dalai Lama. I love this one too. I think Daddy really likes the Dalai Lama because there's quite a few pictures around of that. I even have one of them at home. And now back to this shelf of art supplies. These are, I think, Letraset Trier markers. I'm not too sure if he uses these ones too often, but he also has a couple of boxes of oil paints. And these are Eraldo de Paolo oil paints, which have not yet been open. I think this is actually an Australian brand. I'm not too sure on that, but I've only ever seen them in Australia. And then these oil paints, my Artscape, are from Amazon because he bought me a set and I really need to use it. So I'll get that out at some point. Okay, now I've pulled all the pads of paper out, starting off with some cheaper Bockingford watercolour paper, but then we go into the Saunders Waterford 100% cotton watercolour paper. It's so good. I love that paper very much. He's got some Fabriano Artistico paper, some Montmartre cotton paper, which is surprisingly good. I have a pad of it at home and and it's really nice though they've changed the packaging since I bought my one some more Saunders Waterford paper St Cuthbert's Mill is a little bit cheaper than a few other brands in Australia and it's a really high quality one so I do recommend it looks like he's just got a plain cartridge pad that looks like a pretty old one because they've changed their designs on the fronts of their paper but a standard cartridge paper pad and a little doodle drawing there that I found Next up is some Reeves watercolour paper. I think this one is probably just uh, cellulose paper rather than cotton. Then we also have some Araldo de Paolo paper. This stuff is pretty good too. I've used some of it myself and it's actually quite nice. There's also some more expensive Canson Heritage paper. That stuff costs a fortune. And then Art Spectrum came out with some watercolour paper probably only a few years ago the 100% cotton stuff and that's actually quite good more Araldo de Paolo and another Art Spectrum watercolour pad and then going into the larger ones which I decided to leave in the box there's a range of different papers from the cheaper Derwent Academy watercolour paper all the way to a slightly more expensive Eraldo de Paolo one and then the cream of the crop coming up next is an Archer's Aquarel watercolour paper in rough because dad tends to prefer the rougher paper but he has some really nice pads of paper and I just can't resist them. That one's from Aldi. That paper's pretty crappy. I've got a pad of it myself and I tend to just use it for practices and things. <laughs> but it's always good to have a nice range so that you can practice on cheaper paper sometimes and then use the more expensive stuff when you want to do something good. And then there's even an oil sketch pad in there. So this is pretty much all I've filmed. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again really soon in another video. Swatch you later. Bye!